Hey friends, it's Simon Hurley and welcome to another video. And Happy New Year, it's 2023 and I'm excited to be back. Now in between Christmas and New Year's, it's kind of a weird time where you don't really know exactly what to make. It's still winter and freezing cold outside, but it's not Christmas anymore. So maybe I wanna make some winter cards. So today I pulled out two stamp sets from my stash that I'm gonna show how to change up the season of the stamp set just by changing up the colors and backgrounds. Hopefully this will help you get a lot more use out of what you have in your crafting stash. And before we get started, I wanted to let you know everything I use is linked down below in the description box and using those links helps support me, so I really appreciate it. Now without further ado, let's get into it. So today I brought out this Spread Your Wings stamp set, which I released in the fall season, but I'm gonna show how to create kind of a wintry scene with this, and then I'm going to dig into the Mythical Monsters stamp set, which this one really gives kind of a Halloween vibe, and I wanna show how to turn this to kind of a wintry theme as well. All right, so let's start out with this Spread Your Wings stamp set. I love the images in this. This one is really large, and this can be great for coloring. It also has the solid images, which we can use to stamp over top for really easy coloring. Now with this one, I'm doing it in my Misty stamp tool since it's kind of a larger image and then I can easily just kind of place this hang it off of the side of the card with the branch there kind of center it there and then pick it up with the misty door all right then I'm going to use some VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink this is a really nice jet black ink and it's gonna give me a really great crisp image so I'll just ink this guy up and then we can stamp it right down onto our stark white cardstock and give it some good pressure so it all transfers so once that's all complete, we can go in with our clear heat embossing powder. I like to put this over top just because it gives it a nice glossy finish and because it's kind of a pigment ink, so it takes a little bit longer to dry. So to avoid it smudging, I like to add heat embossing powder. Okay, then I'll bring in my heat tool and heat set this until it's clear and shiny. And I wanna make two cards with this, so the awesome part about having it in the Misty is I can just take this same image, put a piece of stark white cardstock in, and then go right back in with our ink and it'll stamp in the exact same spot. So this is great if you wanna make like a card set and you wanna have all of the images in the same spot. It works perfectly for that. And then again, I'll go in and clear heat emboss it as well. All right, so I'll just clean off that stamp. And the thing I love about that VersaFine too is it cleans off really great with just a little bit of water and there's no staining. And then we can put this back on the clear sheet. Okay, I wanna keep stamping in my Misty, but this is a little bit warped. So the magnet doesn't really do a great job at holding it down anymore. So this is where I like to go in with a clear sticky mat. This one is a clearly amazing mat from scrapbook.com. I'll peel off the protective cover and then we can place this down in our Misty. And then we can place our cardstock right on top. And this holds it down much better than a magnet would. It does a great job at making sure that it doesn't pull up even if it's warped, which I really like so we can get a better stamping. All right, then I can grab the solid birds out of the set. And I'll line them up with the images and place them right over top of the outline birds. So just line them up carefully. And once these guys are lined up, we can go in and pick them up with our misty door. So to make this more wintry, I'm gonna do some cardinals because those are kind of winter classic birds. So I looked up an image of a cardinal and this is what we're going for, kind of the red bodies and there's a little bit of black around its face. So I'm gonna start off by using a little bit of bee sting and I'm going to ink up the whole bird. And actually the beaks on these guys looked pretty red instead of an orangey color. So I'm going to ink these up with the red color as well. And then we will stamp it down, give it some good coverage. And here's the awesome part about stamping in the Misty. If we want to, we can add more shading to some areas. So I'll add a little bit more to the bottom half of the birds and the top half to give it a little bit more of a blended look. And then to soften the color out a little bit, I'm gonna go in with a blender to make sure there are no harsh lines and kind of blend out that color just a little bit. And then we can stamp it down one more time. To add even more shading, I wanna go in with Game Over as well. And I'm going to bring that in on the tails to give some shading, and then I'll also bring it in from the top of their head to add a little bit of shading up there as well. And again, the blending tool will help blend out that color a little bit to make sure there's no harsh marks on the edges. And we'll stamp those down. And this is why I love the Misty. See how that color is building up just beautifully there? All right, and if we want to, we can even go in with that same game over kind of dark maroon color and a little detail blending tool. And I'm just gonna add some color around its wings as well. So this helps us get into some smaller areas if we wanna add this color in more detailed areas around the bird. All right, and then I'll stamp that down. And you can see what a difference that made to add even more detail in there with the blending. So these little guys get into much smaller spaces and they come in a pack of five. Now for the black around the face, I'm gonna use Shady. I don't wanna go too dark black so that it covers up the eye. So this really dark charcoal gray color is gonna be super helpful. 
So I'll add this onto a detail blending tool, and then again, I'll just go right around the face and getting this darker color in there to add much more shading to the bird. All right, we'll stamp that down. And if we want to, we can keep going in and layering up that color. Because these are translucent dye-based inks, each layer is gonna make it darker and darker. So I'm just gonna keep layering that guy up until I'm satisfied with the coloring that we have on there. All right, and there we go. I love how these birds look, and they're totally giving that cardinal vibe there with just the coloring. And then to peel it off the sticky mat, I just bend the mat a little bit, and that really helps release the cardstock without warping the cardstock anymore. And then I'll go back in with the plastic and place that right over top of the sticky mat so that it doesn't get any dust when we store it. All right, to color in the rest of this branch, I'm gonna add some of my ink colors down to my craft sheet. So I'm using a little bit of Weeping Willow and also a little bit of Viper for the leaves as well. Actually, I just thought about it, and if it's winter, there wouldn't be any leaves. So we'll end up cutting those off in the final result. All right, we'll add a little bit of water down to our craft sheet, and then I always like to go in with my paintbrush and a little bit of water first, just to get the cardstock ready to take a little bit more color and have it blend on the surface. So I'll just go in on that branch and add a little bit of water down before we go in with our color. Then I'll pick up that Weeping Willow color and we can really simply go in with that brown. We don't need to do too much shading on this because the branch is pretty small. I'll just go in there and watercolor it out. All right, then to finish this off, I'm going to go in with my Fiskars Spring Assist Scissors. I really like these guys because they spring back out at you so your hands don't get tired when you're fussy cutting, and it makes them cut a really nice smooth line. So I'll just go in here, I'm leaving a little bit of a white border all the way around the image, and when I get to those leaves, I'll just go a little bit closer to that branch and cut them right off, and nobody will ever know. Well, except for me and you. The outline of this bird image is pretty simple, so it's not too difficult to fussy cut out and should only take a little bit of time to get around these edges. All right, so there it is once it's all completely cut out and you can see we just got rid of those leaves so that it makes it more of a winter look. But I wanna create a wintry background for the birds, so I'm gonna start off by using a little bit of breakup blue on my piece of stark white cardstock and I'm just going to ink blend all the way across at the bottom of the cardstock. For this, I'm just using a domed foam blending tool which I really like, and I'll just smoothly blend this color on the surface. And starting off, Breakup Blue is this really light, nice blue wintery color. Then I'll take No Diving and blend this right into the Breakup Blue color. And this is a great mid-tone blue. You can see it's super bright and vibrant. Next, I'm gonna blend it into Midnight Snack, which is this really great navy color. And what I really love about using this dark white cardstock, along with these dome foam blending tools and the inks, of course, is that they blend together super beautifully. So you can see we get really nice smooth color here and it makes it super simple to transition in between the different colors and get such a great blend. That's one thing I really love about my inks and cardstock together. They work together beautifully to get such a smooth blend. Last but not least, up top, I'm going in with a little bit of Shady, which is that same charcoal gray color. And this is just going to really darken that blue color up top and make it have even more depth so that it creates such a great nighttime sky look. So check that out, that's Midnight Snack and adding Shady to it just makes it an even darker blue. You can add Shady to dark reds and blue colors to make them even deeper. To add some detail and finish off this background, I'm using the Stitch Snowflakes background stamp. You can see there's so much beautiful detail and intricacy in these snowflakes. So I'm gonna go in, place this on its back, and I'm just going to spray a little bit of water onto the surface of this stamp. We just want this kind of covered with little water droplets, but not too much water. Then I'm going to take my inked background and flip this right into the stamp there and then give it some good pressure all the way around. You just wanna make sure that every part of the stamp has come in contact with the background and that water is gonna start reacting things. So you can see those snowflakes with the water are gonna start lifting up and sort of bleaching the ink in that background to create this kind of watermark look. I'm going to go in with the heat tool to kind of solidify where it is and crisp up that design and it will also kind of bleach it a little bit more. So you'll see as we dry it, that design gets whiter and whiter and you can see those snowflakes even more clearly. Look how beautiful that is. I love that the ink reacts really nicely with water like that. All right, then I'll position my birds and I'm going to place them down on some foam tape so that they're kind of popped up and standing off of that background a little bit. Now, I absolutely love the sentiments that come along in this set. They are some great ones that work along with the birds and also some great ones for sympathy, birthday. You've got lots of different occasions in here. But since this is a winter card, I wanted to look in some Christmas stamp sets. So this one's called Winter Woodland and I couldn't pass this up. It says Seasons Tweetings. I thought that was perfect for the colder weather. So I encourage you to look in your set because you don't always have to use the greetings from that particular stamp set. Look and see what works best for your cards. So I'll use a scrap of my cardstock and ink up with some black ink 
and stamp it down right onto my stark white cardstock. You guys know the drill by now. We'll throw over a layer of clear heat embossing powder, tap off the excess, and then we'll heat set it till it's clear and shiny. All right, then I'll go in with my Fiskars Spring Assist scissors, and I'm just going to cut right around this sentiment. I like to just cut loosely around these sentiments rather than just leaving it on a larger rectangle. I find that taking the extra time to do this just gives it a little bit more of a finished look, and it'll fit in some tighter spaces on your card. All right, so I've added some foam tape to this too, and I love that we're able to pop this right in between the birds. It's almost like this sentiment was made perfectly for this. All right, and there we have that finished card. I loved using this Spread Your Wings stamp set and making these two cardinals, and just by switching out the colors and giving it a snowy background, we were able to completely change the look of the stamp set. I absolutely love how this one turned out, and it's the perfect wintry card to send right now. All right, for the next card, I'm gonna use the Mythical Monster stamp set. I loved this one during the Halloween season, and I wanna show you guys how to use these all year long. First off, these are gonna be great for Valentine's Day, so if you don't have this set, I think you're gonna love it for that. So I'll probably make a whole separate video on that, but I wanna use this guy and make sort of a Yeti looking monster. So first I'll just use a little bit of VersaFine Claire again to stamp him out in some black ink. I don't even think I have to say this next step anymore, but I'm adding some clear heat embossing powder and we'll heat set it till it's clear and shiny. All right, now let's create a color palette on our craft sheet. I'm gonna use a little bit of clear skies, some no diving to get a Yeti kind of colored blue face. And then I'll do woof, which is that nice gray color for most of its fur. And then a little bit of warmth with some cookie dough. First off, whenever I'm coloring, again, I'll go in with a layer of water first over top of my stark white cardstock just to get the paper ready to take the rest of the water we're going to add down. It helps the color blend rather than just sinking right into the cardstock. All right, for the face, I'm gonna go in using a little bit of clear skies and we'll add that blue color down. And it really is all about the coloring that's gonna make this guy look like a Yeti. Right, so I'll add a light wash of blue and then I'll go in using some no diving to add some shadows and depth. I wanna add shading kind of wherever the body parts meet. So where that fur meets his face, I'll add a little bit of shading. I'll also add some underneath his nose and mouth and then again, kind of around the face where that fur meets the rest of his face. And then to help blend it, we'll add a little bit more water and blend out that color super easily. Then for the rest of the body, I'm gonna use a little bit of woof to add that gray color all around. And then again, to add that darker color in, I'll use less water and more of that gray color. All right, then for his horns, hands, and legs, I wanna add a little bit more of a warm color. So I'm going in with cookie dough to add a little bit of a tan color in there. And there we have our finished Yeti. Again, it's all about the coloring. You can see with those blues and grays, we made him look just perfect for winter. But again, changing up the colors will make it so you can use this all season long. All right, to create a scene, I wanna create a line of trees. So I'm gonna use the Evergreens background stamp, but instead of using the full stamp, I'm going to peel it apart. And these actually have individual strips of these trees. And you also have the separate individual trees you can use as well. So I love the versatility of this stamp. So to stamp this out, I'm gonna grab a Simon Hurley Create Large Acrylic Block. And then I'm gonna take my stamp and kind of bend it at the center a little bit to create almost the look of a hill with this stamp. So we'll add it down onto our block curved like this. And then to stamp it down, I'm gonna use a little bit of Gur for kind of a tone on tone brown effect. So I'll just ink this up all the way around. And then we can stamp it down onto the surface, giving it some good pressure so that all of that ink transfers and then we can lift it off. And you can see that great tree line there is going to create a great place to put our Yeti. All right, then whenever you curve a stamp like this, you wanna take it off pretty quickly once you're done so you can reform it back into its original shape and then put it right back onto the stamp sheet. But I wouldn't leave it on there for too long bent like that, otherwise it'll kind of remember that position. Then to cut this out, I'm just going to go around this and follow the edge without going into all of the little details of cutting out those trees. So it'll look something like this. You could just leave it curved like this, but I'm actually going to go in individually in between these trees and just quickly cut this out. It shouldn't take too long to kind of follow along some of those details and cut these guys out, leaving a little bit of a border all the way around the images. And this guy's gonna sit kind of right in the center there so we can avoid some of them and then finish cutting on the other side. For the background behind the trees, I want something a little bit more abstract. So I'm going in with these Nouveau Shimmer powders in a blue and purple color. And I really love these powders so much. So all you need to do is take them and just lightly tap on the backside. And a little bit of this powder is gonna go a really long way. So you don't need to add much to the surface. And notice that when I add this powder down, I'm not squeezing these bottles at all because that'll make way too much powder come out. I just lightly tap the back to release as much powder as I want and tap it all around the surface 
So it's pretty easy to control how much I add down. All right, and this is where the magic happens. I'm gonna go in with my spray bottle and add water down all over on the surface here. And you can kind of make these powders burst and react with the water. So you can spray a little bit or a lot. If you spray more, kind of these little gatherings of color will go away. And I kind of like those. So I'm gonna stop once I'm happy with this background. And then I'm gonna go in and aid this in drying by using my heat tool. Now I really like this Ranger heat tool for things like this to dry up um, kind of watery backgrounds because if I used a regular heat tool, it would blow around this color. But this is just going to aid in drying without moving around the watercolor. So it'll dry exactly how it was. And check out how cool that background is. I love the kind of wintry vibe of it. And once it's dry, check out all of that amazing shimmer. In person, it's just beautiful that these powders have that built-in shimmer to them once they dry. I've added lots of adhesive to the back of this, and then to add it to our card base, this is top folding. So I'm going to start off with the top edge then. I'll add the background right down, and then follow along to the other side place that down, and then it should line up with the rest of the card perfectly. The reason I line it up with the top fold first is so that if anything else needs to be cut off, we can do it from the sides, so I'll just trim this right off. And there we go, and then it looks perfect. All right, then I'll adhere down the tree scapes right from the bottom of the background, and I'll finish it off by adding the Yeti down with some foam tape right to the center of the card. All right, I love this winter woodland stamp set because it's got some great winter sentiments that don't necessarily need to be Christmassy, like let it snow. I also love this walking in a winter wonderland, which I think I'm gonna use for this card. For this, I'll place the card into the misty and then I'm going to lay down the sentiment right below that Yeti. And then to make sure it's straight, when I press this down, I'm gonna make sure it lines up with the grid lines on the lid there and that should make it nice and straight for the card. Here, I'll use my anti-static powder bag since we're gonna do a little bit of heat embossing to make sure the powder doesn't stick where we don't want it to. And then I'll use a little bit of Versamark to ink this up and stamp it down. And this is a clear sticky ink, which is gonna hold the embossing powder. Then here, I'll throw over a layer of white heat embossing powder tap off the excess, and then we'll heat set this until it's nice and bright white. So there we have our super bright white sentiment that stands out against that craft card stock. And here is a look at that full finished card. I love that we use that Mythical Monsters stamp set, which totally isn't really Christmas or winter related, and turned it into this adorable winter card with that little Yeti by changing up the colors. I'm obsessed with how this turned out and I cannot wait to send this guy out. All right, so I hope you guys really enjoyed this video and learned a little bit about just looking at your stamp sets with a little bit more creativity, changing up the colors and getting a completely different look out of what you already have. Leave me a comment down below letting me know which was your favorite card. Also down there is a full supplies list to everything that I used and using those links really helps support me so I do appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys soon. Have a great day. Bye.